Hi, it's Robin. I heard COBOL programmers are in high demand again, so I thought I'd brush up on my COBOL skills in case anyone watching wanted to hire me and my Commodore 64. Notice I've got my Super CPU cartridge plugged in so we can really fly. I'll be 20 times more productive. You might never heard of COBOL if you're younger, say, under the age of 80. I asked my father today, he's 72, and he said he'd never heard of it. Basically, it's the computer language the dinosaurs used for programming, and they wrote so much code with it that we still haven't managed to replace it all. Today I'll be porting the famous 10 print basic program that I won't stop going on about. In case you're not familiar with it, here it is, and we'll run it. Just generates this maze. There it is at one megahertz. Okay, so we'll load up COBOL. And strangely, it starts with a SIS2051. Here we go, COBOL64 version 2.5 from 1984 by K.A. Alexander, published by Abacus. By the way, you can find this online as well as a manual. I'll put a link in the description below. So I've written the program already. Choose option 5 to get. And we have to type the file name in quotes, strangely. You can't even put a space in the file name for whatever reason, even with the quotes. Okay, so it's loaded. And let's take a look at it. One to edit. And it loads in various overlays as you edit. The Super CPU with Jiffy DOS and the SD card ease the pain of this quite a bit. Doing this on a stock 1541 is very slow loading in the edit overlay, the run section of the program, and so on. Okay, and we'll actually switch down to 1 megahertz while we're using the editor because it's almost too fast. Just in case you're not convinced how great COBOL is, just looking here in the manual, Chapter 3, COBOL Advantages. The long list of COBOL advantages is derived chiefly from its intrinsic quality of permitting the programmer to state the problem solution in English prose and thus provide automatic program and system documentation. When users adopt well-chosen data names before attempting to program a system, maximum documentational advantages of the language described herein are obtained. To a computer user, COBOL 64 offers the following major advantages. 1. Expeditious means of program implementation, providing a high degree of programmer productivity. Well, I gotta agree with that. It only took me about two days to port this one line of BASIC over to this COBOL. 2. Accelerated programmer training and simplified retraining requirements. 3. Reduced conversion costs when changing from a computer of one manufacturer to that of another. 4. Significant ease of program modification enhancements due to the high level of readability. 5. Documentation which facilitates non-technical management participation in data processing activities. And 6. A comprehensive source program diagnostic capability which includes tracing, breakpoints, and single step features. Alright, so we'll list the program. And there it is. Not much to it. So let's go through it. Then you can list and press the stop key. And let's go through this step by step. COBOL requires several different sections. The identification division, by the way, this is a version of COBOL 74, not the new COBOL 85. Yeah, those are years from the 1900s. Identification division. And this is where we give the program the name. The program ID, 10 print. And yeah, these periods are required at the end of each noun or paragraph. Oh, and these are the line numbers over here. They don't have to go up by 100, but that's what the renumber command built into COBOL 64 does by 100s. And yeah, you use them just like basic line numbers. Environment division. The configuration section, and this is where we can tell that our source computer is a C64, and so is the object computer. I don't think it would do anything different if we typed like HAL 9000 there, but anyway. 
This is the data division. You can also define files here, but we won't be using files today. And the working storage section, this is where you define your variables. This 77 is the level number. All variables in COBOL have a level number and normally you would put like level one, level five, and you can kind of nest variables, but we're not going to be doing that today. So this is where you name your variable, but I should stop using the word variable. The correct word is picture. So this one's the name is work. It is a pic, which is short for picture. And you know, I haven't found a definite explanation for how the word picture got chosen. I assume it has something to do with how this is the representation of the variable. Okay, and this bizarre thing is how you actually define the variable. This is a numeric variable and the number nine indicates that it's a digit from zero through nine. And there are going to be seven in a row of them. And then the V marks where you want the decimal place to be. And then another seven digits after it. And this is going to be our work variable. I'll explain what we're doing with it more. And we're going to make give it a default value of zero. Now here is another variable called seed. And it is just going to be a number between from zero up to one non-inclusive. So basically it's just a decimal point and then seven digits afterwards. And we're going to default it to 0.1. And this is going to be used in our random number generator. COBOL doesn't have a random number generator, at least COBOL 74 for the 64 doesn't. So we're going to have to make our own. This is why this took me a while. Okay, and this is kind of extra, but I'm going to keep a counter so that we can fill the screen a set number of time. We're going to draw a set number of slashes. So we're going to keep a four digit integer for that and set to zero. And this is how the manual said, if you want to print Petsky characters, like this is character 13, carriage return, then this is the correct way to do it. Define it, character 13, and pick X. X's are used for characters in the variables. So it's just a single character set to Petsky value 13. And here we're defining 205 and 206. This is just, a, again, the name of it, character 205 and character 206. And we're just defining them. I couldn't figure out any other way of printing the these special characters. Those are the slashes that make up the maze. All right, now we're going to list from 1400 on. And this is also a little extra, just keeping a couple more integer variables. Well, that's why I'm calling them. Again, they're just numeric values for left and right. And we're just going to keep track of the two slashes. And at the end of the run, we're going to get a report back about how many left and how many right slashes we used just to see how good our random number generator is. Okay, and we're defaulting those to zero. So there is some extra code in here that wasn't in the C64 original. All right, now the, the big moment, the procedure division. This is where your actual code is. So far, it's all just being defined everything else, but here's the actual code. And then we're going to name our paragraph or our section startup. I believe that could be anything you want. And then this is another label, count loop. And this is marks the beginning of our loop. This was some debug code, but I left it in here. If you put an asterisk in column seven, then that means the rest of this line up to 80 characters, you see how it wraps around here, will be a comment. I didn't mention yet that COBOL is very picky about where you place at least COBOL 74. That's all I'm talking about today is very picky about where you put things. Line numbers must be six digits long. Then there must be a space or a couple other special characters. Then these headings need to be in the eighth column, but then actual code has to start here on the, the 12th character. And if you put just one character off, see how down at the bottom here, invalid entry, and it doesn't tell you why. 
That's just one of many reasons that you can get that invalid entry. So the error checking or the error reporting really isn't all that great here. So anyway, we'll fix that. So this comment display is like a print and you just list your variable or you just list the values. This is a little string with a space in it. And that was just for debug purposes. Okay, moving on. Perform RNG. That is like a procedure call. You can call a different paragraph with the perform command. And I'll get back, I'll show you that in a bit. But basically that generates her random number and puts it in this essentially global variable seed, which goes from zero to one. If seed is less than 0.5, this is the much touted English-like nature of COBOL. But of course, it's so strict and it's so unforgiving that in fact, I, I don't know, <laughs> I find most other programming languages a lot more friendly. So essentially, if seed is less than 0.5, this is our random number from zero to one. If it's on the lower half, then we are going to print character 205. And just for our statistics, we're going to add one to left. So that just increments that counter we have. Else, we're going to display the other slash, character 206, and add one to right. And then you notice that we haven't been putting periods after this whole section. That's because it's all one sentence. Well, I guess one paragraph. And that marks the end of it. So yeah, it actually uses these periods or full stops to scope something like an if else. And then we're just going to add one to the overall count. If count is less than 999. Yeah, well, we don't have to do that many. Let's just do 999 today. I was, I was doing more for a while there when debugging. If it's less than 999, go to count loop. Yes, COBOL uses go to's. And that just loops back up here again. Okay, so that's the main program. And now we're going to list from 2900 to the end. There doesn't seem to be a command just to say list 2900 and on. So that's why I'm typing that second parameter. If you just type list 2900, it only displays the one line. Okay, we already looked at that one. Okay, now we're going to display return code. And that is just, as far as I know, the only way to do a carriage return. And then we're just going to generate this little stat. Display left, that's the number of left slashes, plus the number of right. This isn't actually doing the math. This is just printing the plus character for readability. Equals count. And then we're going to stop the run. That's the same as end in Commodore Basic. And now here's that paragraph procedure that we define RNG period. And what does it do? Multiply seed by 214013 giving work. So this is just a terrible implementation of a LCG, a linear congruential generator, which is a very simple way of creating random numbers. Pseudo-random numbers, of course, not truly random. So I just chose a number of different values, uh, just Googling around, really, uh, to find some suggested numbers. Now, really, you should write one of these with a mod function, typically a power of two, because it's quick. But as far as I can tell, COBOL 74 does not have a mod function. The only way I could do any kind of mod function was to create that variable. Let's just look at that again. So I made this work value. These are like fixed point numbers. So it's seven digits dot. That's the decimal seven digits. And that's my working variable. And the seed, which is the random number, is only the decimal part. So we use work while we're doing the multiplying and so on. 
So we multiply seed by this large number that's going to take that value between 0 and 1, multiply it by quite a bit, then we're going to add this fixed decimal value here, and we're doing this all in work, which is the bigger variable that can handle numbers up to, uh, what is it, seven digits, so up to just shy of 10 million. But then we move work into seed, which just truncates everything. So essentially this is like our mod function because I couldn't find any way to do a mod otherwise. And there are optional clauses here to either round or to catch errors due to overflow. So it is capable of doing more serious work, but we don't want that today. All we want to do is essentially make this into a mod function. Now, part of why this is a terrible LCG is that these numbers should be tuned to 2 to the power of 32, that is about 2 billion, but I didn't do that. Basically, I experimented until I came up with something that was okay. You are welcome to grab a copy of COBOL64 and show me your working solution. I will check that out. And if there's a really good one, I'll probably make a video for my second channel showing that. Okay, and then when this paragraph ends, again, you notice I don't have any, any full stops after these, but there is one here. That indicates it's the end of the paragraph and control returns back to where we first called this. And finally, end prog. The example did that, so I did it too. I guess it's necessary. All right, once we're done, we type exit. Warning, new save required, press return. Okay, so it's saved. And now we are going to run this. So it loads up the syntax checker. And while I was writing this, boy, did I ever get a lot of errors. That was really tedious waiting for this, but new save required again, not sure why but we don't have any errors here. Searching for, I believe that cord is COBOL run debug module. And strangely, you don't press, all these other times we've been pressing return, this time we have to <laughs> press return to abort or any other key to continue. Okay, so here we go. Let's run our program. What? The crash. I think it crashed. Well, let's load that up again. Load ten print. Now let's run it. Here we go. Back down one megahertz. Yay! <laughs> There's 10 print. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm a dinosaur too. Here is the COBOL I did in university in 1992. Wasn't I smart? Look, it was installed in Robin's room. Confidential. And there's that old AS45. Program to calculate the proposed wage increase for the nurses. So well, that was fun. There we go. There we go. Ugh. What's that? That's a, like a dead spider. Ugh. Sorry, guys. Well, that must be running more than 999. If I put 20 megahertz mode on. There's 20 megahertz mode. So it looks pretty random, eh? Okay, thanks to my patrons who support this channel if you're interested in... What's the deal? Why didn't print the stats?
There. Why well, didn't do that the first time? Okay, so printed 999 characters and 498 left and 501 right. Yeah, yeah that adds up to 999. So that's pretty random for our purposes. That terrible LCG is good enough. All right, thanks to my patrons who support the channel. If you'd like to support these videos and get some perks such as your name on the screen and some bonus videos, then please check my Patreon link below. All right, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.